Hi there, Kyle Papur here with another video. Within the realm of the topic of macroeconomics, this lesson is going to focus on aggregate demand, which I'll abbreviate as AD throughout this video. We'll, uh, in the video, we're going to first define aggregate demand, talk a little bit about uh, what it is and why it is. We're going to look at the graph of aggregate demand, uh, talk a little bit about why it behaves the way it does and why it looks the way it does when we graph it. And then we're going to go through some exercises that deal with movements along an aggregate demand curve versus shifts of an aggregate demand curve. Talk a little bit about why the aggregate demand curve might shift. And then I'm going to refer you to a set of exercises so that you can practice a little bit. First things first, when we define aggregate demand, it's a similar definition to uh, GDP. So we could take all household consumption and all firms' investment and all government spending and the difference between what a nation imports versus what a nation exports. And we could come up with, at any point in time, uh, an aggregate demand output. And when we look at that output level at a number of different price levels or inflation levels, I guess you'd want to say in a nation, we would have uh, aggregate demand. So usually how we define it is total demand in an economy when we take into account all households, all firms, the government, and the rest of the world in terms of one nation's imports and exports with, with the rest of the world. Another important characteristic to keep in mind about aggregate demand is it takes the price level in a nation as measured by a price index into account. When we go to graph an aggregate demand curve, on the vertical axis we have the price level as measured by a price index. And on the horizontal axis, we have real GDP, which is gross domestic product, which has been adjusted to take into account the variations of inflation. As we can see, the aggregate demand curve slopes downward to the right, just like a, a demand curve does. And this means that at a high price level, a relatively high price level, real output or real GDP is relatively low. And this means that at high prices, consumers aren't likely to buy as many goods and services. Firms are not likely to invest or borrow money, certainly to invest. And if at high prices, a nation's exports are likely to be more expensive to foreign consumers. And so we find then that output is relatively low. If price levels were to lower a little bit, as I've demonstrated in the graph, then output can increase. Why is that? Well, it's because consumers can afford to purchase more goods and services. Firms can afford to take out more loans in order to invest. And because price levels are low, the exports from this nation look cheaper to a foreign consumer. Now, why does the aggregate demand curve slope downward to the right? There are three reasons. The first reason is one that we're going to call the interest rate effect. And this really affects Households, when they're purchasing uh, big item goods like cars and houses and college uh, classes, maybe for their, for their kids, and it also affects firms when firms are taking out loans in order to invest and create more jobs and cr purchase more capital. At any given interest rate, if price levels in the national economy go up, then what it is that we borrowed to purchase becomes a lot less affordable. And so that we're not 
likely to take out loans in order to purchase those things. So we would get then a combination of high price levels and not much ability then to take out loans to purchase goods and services or from a firm's perspective to take out loans in order to invest. If price levels were to come down then we would get more economic activity and more loans because those goods and services that we wanted to purchase with the loans become more affordable. The next is the wealth effect and the wealth is a measurement of a household's assets, total assets, so houses, jewelry, vehicles, uh, maybe artwork that's in the house. If we were to add that up for per individual and multiply that by every person in the nation we would have what we would call uh, uh, a measurement of wealth. If price levels in a national economy go up, then uh, our assets feel or we feel less wealthy because our assets relative to those price levels now uh, have gone down. At lower price levels, the opposite happens. We may feel more wealthy because our assets have greater value relative to, per, to the price level. And we will spend accordingly. If we feel wealthy, we'll spend more money. If we don't feel as wealthy, we won't spend as money. So the wealth effect really affects consumption. The next net export effect just simply means that at high price levels, a nation's exports are more expensive, and so foreign consumers don't buy as many. At lower price levels, which I'm indicating with my cursor, uh, this nation's exports uh, seem cheaper to foreign consumers, and so they buy more. So uh, in each of these three cases, we get a tendency for the aggregate supply curve to slope downward to the right as it's graphed against price levels in real GDP. When uh, we talk about aggregate demand, we need to distinguish between movements along a curve, which I'm going to talk about in this pane, and then shifts in the curve, which I'm going to talk about in the next pane. Uh, movements along a curve are simply happen when you have cha either changes in the price level or changes in real GDP. So if a question gives, uh, if a question or problem on an AP or an IB exam talks about changes in the price level and changes in real GDP and asks you to speculate about what's happening with the aggregate demand curve, you're not going to move anything. You're just going to simply move up and down an existing curve. So at high price levels like PL1, uh, we have a certain level of real GDP output which we'll call Y uh, initial YI. If price levels were to lower as I've indicated here to PL1 then we would have a greater amount of output. So price levels in this case have decreased and we've got greater output. Uh, if the reverse were to happen then we would have less output. If we have something that impacts real GDP we're probably likely to have changes in the price level. So changes in the price level, changes in the real GDP will cause movements up and down this curve. It won't cause us to have to shift and create a new curve. So how do we take a look at shifts or changes in a curve? We'll start with aggregate demand initial and we're just going to imagine that something in our national economy like uh, maybe overall income levels or better profitability expectations among firms or just an increase in consumer confidence has uh, changed. And what happens then is that we've ha we'll have a change in the entire structure of the aggregate demand curve which will cause us to have to change the aggregate demand curve because you've had a fundamental shift in the variables that make up this curve. So in this case let's just assume that I've had an increase in consumer confidence. Consumers are more rosy for whatever reason this next month about uh, the future uh, potential of the economy and their role in it. So if they're rosier about that, they're likely to spend more money. What happens? Well, we would have a, an increase in aggregate demand from AD initial to AD1, as I have indicated here. So the entire curve would shift right. So you would have an increase in real GDP at every single price level. What would happen if the reverse were true? What would happen if we would have a decrease in consumer confidence, for example? Well, the opposite would occur. We would have a left shift of the aggregate demand curve from AD initial 
to AD in this case too. And so we would have a decrease in output at every single price level. So what are some of the variables that cause changes in aggregate demand? I'll give you a second to read over these. You'll want to commit these to memory, I guess, until you get to a point where they make sense. So for example, that you know that if you have an increase in the number of jobs in a national economy, more people are spending their money that doesn't have anything to do with price level or real output uh, but and that will affect aggregate demand and cause an increase or a right shift in aggregate demand there are a lot of questions on the AP and the IB examination that will ask you to be able to shift the curve in the proper direction and so you're going to get need to get into the habit of practicing uh, with these various variables to see how they impact the aggregate demand model time to practice now. If you go to the my Google Docs link that I have included here and that I will embed in this video, you can download a practice sheet and it is something then that we as a class can correct or if you send me an email about one of the questions I will try to respond in a timely fashion. So that's it for aggregate demand Next time, we're going to talk about aggregate supply.